This is what we're aiming to get to this time, which is a uh, menu bar at the top, which obviously is just a, a freebie. We'll um, we'll look in, in more detail into how to sort of develop that um, later on. Um, but as you can see here, there is now a long list of devices. Now this could be a, a list of switches, or it could be a list of uh, lights, or doors, or sensors, etc. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't affect um, how it works. It all works in the same way. What you'll notice here is I've moved away slightly from having icons to actually having text. Um, again, this is part of my um, my unrest at um, user interfaces and the fact that I can never really settle on what I want what I want it to look like. However, this makes uh, makes the the overall look far more responsive because you end up with um, something which of course will adapt to any particular screen. Um, as you can see here we've got um, we've got all the devices all in one go and for example if I um, if I touch the uh, washing machine on the panel then it goes off immediately because this is being updated every second and what you might actually um, see is that um, or guess is that obviously it doesn't matter where you're pressing this button um, it will update on all devices that are displaying it and because of the CSS that we're put in um, when the um, when the viewport is seen as being um, landscape in other words when it's perhaps on a fixed panel or when it's on a um, a large screen device that's on its side and it is showing it in landscape then um, four uh, devices are shown um, uh, in either of four columns of devices but basically when as the um, viewing portal approaches something which is more akin to being um, a portrait you'll notice now that the um, the devices have gone into a two column format and obviously that's deliberate that's so that when you're looking on your smartphone um, you have a responsive uh, something responsive that you can look at and you can actually make head and a tail of if um, if there were four uh, columns it may look a bit too too crowded for your smartphone so that's what we're aiming for this time so I hope um, that looks sufficient for you. Maybe what you might want to do is create some um, create some icons and perhaps put them in the back of these divs. But um, again, that would be that would be up to you, and it might be something that we explore later on down the line. Another interesting byproduct of receiving um, all devices in one go from Demotics every second is that um, if you, you choose to use the text appearing in each box, um, what actually will happen is that, um, of course, they will be updated um, live. So, for example, if I wanted to change this device, um, I didn't want it to be called Harry Bed anymore, I would go to Demotics and, as usual, I would rename the device. So, um, if I wanted to, to um, um, just call it uh, bed for example press rename device in in Demotics Demotics will then rename the device it takes a few seconds just to, to transfer it through it's been renamed here so then let's go to back to the um, back to actually our home control uh, system uh, the HTML and you'll notice that it's been updated straight away so um, again uh, that's less admin for you to do um, because your user interface will be updated um, directly from just changing demotics as you normally would do. So I'm just going to quickly uh, change that back to show you again. So I'm um, going to change that to back to Harry Bed and you'll, and you'll see that uh, it will change straight away. So rename that, go back to home control and you see it's uh, it's updated straight away. As usual, this code can be downloaded at fabulousHomeAutomation.wordpress.com. The beginning part of the uh, HTML is purely, again, just setting up the actual page, um, referencing some icons that might be used when we finally got the finished product and we want um, icons to appear instead of just being a standard Chrome or uh, Internet Explorer button. And um, we've also here got some um, uh, fonts from um, from 
Google and they are downloaded um, at the time when the HTML is processed. We've got two uh, fonts, one's called Blue and one's called Comforter um, and I think they go really well together but obviously you can choose which fonts you want as long as the similar fonts are um, as long as the same names are used in the CSS that's, that, um, that you use to accompany this HTML. Of course the CSS is also available to download at the same location so I'll put a link in the description. The first important part to notice is that we have a, an array now which is called devices to display and as you can see I've got quite a few numbers there. Now they relate to the IDX, the, um, the in identifier of the device in Demotics which we've spoken about before but this is new in as much as um, we're just putting them all together in one long array and we put them in the order in which we want them to appear um, on the screen so you as many as many as you want or as few as you want you can put them in here and then um, the theory is that as soon as you run this HTML it will show you those particular devices you don't need to put anything else in like names etc because it gets all of that from Demotics we've got also here a variable called NOD NOD number of devices that's needed uh, later on then we've got um, you, you, you keep that at zero because it adds it adds to it itself. Then we've got a variable called Demotics URL, which is the uh, the URL the uh, the IP address of your Demotics system. So you would change that to whatever you've got in your Demotics system. And then we've got Demotics port, which is um, which is usually 8080, but um, you could have changed that. So I've put that in there so you can change that. Um, I've left a function in there which isn't used this uh, this time, but there is just a tiny snippet there which is text to speech, so uh, you would be able to uh, get the uh, the interface to speak. It's useful for me to to have that so that when you're pressing things on the panel, it can actually give you speech feedback. And then we've got the same um, same functions which you've seen in the previous one, which is switching on, switch off, toggle, and dim, and they all do the same things as they did last time. We've also got an execute function, which also uh, is the same uh, as last time. Uh, it's needed for these these other functions, such as dim and toggle. What we've got here is when the window loads, um, all the devices are uh, prepared and then updated. Get all devices includes a, a script which sets up miniature divs in order to um, contain the information about the particular devices. And then we've got um, some more code further down. This one, for example, is updating a specific device and changing the background. If the um, if the element is on, then it sh changes the background to red. If it's off, to grey. Open red and closed grey as well. So um, you get the you get the principle with that. But this is happening um, automatically for each device. We don't need to uh, we don't need to worry about um, doing this. Uh, it, putting in a, a snippet of code for each device. Then we've got get all devices which is what I'm saying it prepares the div um, for uh, for that particular device. Then of course we've, we've got to tell it how to prepare that div, div and then um, how to update all the devices in one go. This is where we've got an iteration going on. So we've got um, the the length of, of that uh, of the devices is, is, the, is the length of the array and then it iterates through through that continually in a for loop until it's updated all of the devices. Um, just as a side note here, um, we have on our home control system that I'm developing at the moment that hopefully we will uh, I'll be able to share um, in its entirety very shortly. Um, it has all uh, it has many many devices which are being updated every second and it it goes without any problem. Demotics is very capable of providing um, a long list of JSON uh, once every second. There's no problem with that. It's quite capable of being polled as it's called. Then we've got um, add device, which is what um, what happens with when you're adding a, an actual device when it's setting up the uh, the device for the first time. And then we've got the body of the text, and that this is the whole body of the HTML basically. So um, what you've seen. Um, 
uh, in the demonstration that I've shown you is built basically just from this snippet of HTML. I mean, I could really reduce this even further because at the moment, as you can see, the vast majority of it is this div, which is holding information about where uh, the top buttons will lead you. So, um, for example, in our uh, home control system, we've got the home screen, lights, devices, audio, etc. So it's up to you how you want to to do that, but I've I've given you the option that you can uh, you can just edit these accordingly. But then you'll notice that the only place that you need to put any HTML in to actually get all the devices in in one place is just to add a div with the identity devices div. Um, and then what happens here is that within this particular tiny little area here, the um, all the custom uh, all the custom JavaScript that we've talked about just earlier on will populate all of those devices one after the other. So that's really where the magic happens. So you can see that things are taking shape now and that the HTML won't take too long to develop into a fully functional web app now. Um, on this uh, particular part you can see that um, I have developed some other screens which I'll be going into in more detail very very shortly. Um, but you can see there are different um, screens but they all follow the same sort of pattern um, and here we can see that the devices have been um, inserted in just the way that I've shown you just now but there are all other um, divs which are used for different things uh, I still need to uh, fix some of it because uh, it's not it's not displaying 100% correctly um, but you can see down here that there are other divs with which which are sensors which show you when they were last updated so that's something else to um, to show you in a future episode and there is also a um, an audio uh, part of of here which uh, which I'm quite pleased with because it updates um, according to what's playing in different rooms and that is uh, linked with the Sonos system so again I'll be showing that in more detail in a later episode well that's it thank you very much for watching um, and as usual thank you um, to everyone who's commented on my blog over at fabulousshomeautomation.wordpress.com and thank you very much indeed if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing that would be really good it would just show me that um, what I'm doing is, is uh, being worthwhile now and I do appreciate um, every single view so thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you next time